So we are going to really model this hour after our the this the part of our master classes that um, immediately follows our typical lunch. So five minutes per presentation, five minutes of questions to follow. And we've got four wonderful presentations today um, with teachers who come from very different teaching environments. And then once we finish those presentations, we'll send you off into some small groups where we've divided you by the rough um, age level that you teach. And then we'll come back together for a very few minutes at the very end to share out a little bit about what you learned today. So with that, I'd love us to dive right into our presentations. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to Carmen Keels. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, so I'm gonna talk primarily about just my uh, elementary music curriculum that um, my coworker and I sort of discovered a couple of years ago. And it, it has become like a lifesaver in this bizarre world that we are now in. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you in a minute, but the um, it goes, the curriculum is set for pre-K to sixth grade. So our um, choir director in our middle school, we've given some of the theory work that's on the website to his sixth grade, like rotation like elective choir class as well so it's it uh, it's useful for more than just elementary um so i'm gonna it's called music play online and we're in we've been using it for about a year and a half um and it's developed by denise gagne who is a or person um and not only is it good for this time that we're in now, but um, I think it's a really good option for teachers who maybe have very minimal budgets. Now, Denise Gagne has made this free for everyone, for all students until August of this year. Um, but the curriculum itself costs $150 a year, which is like incredible because it's a living document as well. She adds things, she changes things, things move around things, which is like, it's, it's really amazing. So I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully that will work. I'm getting much better with like how to make technology happen. Can everyone see it? Yeah? Okay, awesome. So, um, what's really great so she's some as she as we go along in this world we're in she's changed the website slightly to help it be more um user friendly and make the online learning platform just very easy to find so if you go to the website this is the landing page like there's no login anymore there's no nothing like i can go up and in, you know, sign in if I want to, but everything is right here. Um, all of the recorder stuff, she has all of these different kits. They have little videos that go along with them. Um, Just Be, for example, I'm gonna try and play this and see if it, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. So, no, okay. Hold on. Um, you can't see the presentation. Okay, lower left hand corner up uh, here. Let's see if that works. Can you hear it? Okay. Even if you can't hear it, it, it gives you, so the, um, the recorder track is very, um, it's like there's a beat to it. And so it's not necessarily as, you're not just playing B, 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 B. So there's a back, there's a back track to it. Um, let's see. 
the um, the other thing is when you click on this online learning place, it gives you entire um, lesson plans for all of these different weeks. Are you able to see? Is everyone able to see? Okay, so it'll start out say kindergarten. It's Peter and the Wolf. It'll have a little video where it shows. Let's see all of that. There are PDFs um, to open up. Uh, the only thing I haven't used any of these um, specific like learning module things for the lesson plans. I've been mainly using these games like beat or no beat, major, minor, smooth, separate um, as a part of like a choice chart that I developed for the, the, the week. So they have three different things. Some of them are on from, from music play. Some are other lessons that we are just sort of, we started before spring break and are continuing on. Um, and, and then sometimes the music play lesson connects with those other things and they can pick one or do all of them um, so that it doesn't become like this overwhelming um, amount of work for them and the parents. I mean, I teach kindergarten first grade. So the other, um, <clears throat> The other part of this is if you click on a grade, the page that comes up will have this list of songs and then there's a video for each song with all of the lyrics. So this is something, I've tested this on my kindergarten child, my own child. He can go and click on a song and just watch the video and sing along if he plays it enough times. And so it's a way for parents to be able to give them their music lesson and step back and not have to work through the, the lesson with them, which I know has been hard for me as a parent um, and also teaching. Um, so uh, let's see, now I, I was looking into the chat. Oh, when I share the screen button to share the sound, okay. All right, I'm at five minutes. Um, I love this website. I think it's great. Um, anyone can just go to it and click through all the things. It's really awesome. I love it. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carmen. So we've we've got a few minutes for questions for Carmen about about this site, and um, and about how she uses the site. So if you'd like to add, to ask a question, please, you can either put it in the chat or we can, um, you can just raise your hand with the little raise your hand function. Great, Frank. And you'll need to unmute yourself. Yes. Great. Thanks, Carmen. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering, do you actually send students and parents to that site or do you link things from that site to your google classroom so what i do is in the choice chart it has like a hyperlink for whatever activity they're to do from the website so all they have to do is click on that and it will take them to the website okay um there are i'm not i can't remember if this is a a choice when it's like the free site um at, like we have the curriculum so there are things that I can download like accompaniment tracks you can download and there's also when you own the curriculum you can print out lyrics lyric sheets and music and those kinds of things um, but we've decided every single week if whenever we have a music play choice on the choice chart we always put the link like the link is on their, you know, school page as well. But we always put the link to just avoid any confusion and, you know, mix ups about where to go and how how to get there. Great, thanks. So we have uh, we have several questions on chat. I think I'll just read them all. And since we have just a, a couple of minutes, um, how would we drop this in for older grades who've not done this before? 
how many minutes are the lessons and how many weeks of context for each grade. Can they save their work and you can go on and grade it and do uh, families and students need to sign into the site. Oh, so signing into the site, you no longer have to do it. When this first started, you did, but she shared the password just like on the, the login, like, like on the front page, there was a login. She's like free for students till August, whatever. And then you could just go directly, put the password in and go directly. Now you just go to the website and it's all there. Um, as for saving their work and grading it, um, we are not grading anything. We are not collecting work. The choice charts are completely, um, I mean, they have a music time in their week, but they're, they're, not, um, they're not asked to send us anything. I have gotten some pictures. I have gotten some videos. Um, I suppose you could always say, well, if you, you would have to add something where, you know, okay, write these rhythms and, uh, make a video of you clapping them and email them to me. You could absolutely do that, but there isn't a place on the curric on the site where that's really a thing. Um, and then dropping for older grades. So... I think the most um, useful things for the older grades beyond recorder are some of the theory things, the vocal warm ups, some of the songs. Uh, my coworker that I work with in the middle school, he was having the sixth graders kind of look at some of the theory, but like some of the songs are kind of baby ish, you know, that's, but the, but the theory stuff is kind of, is good. So if you're going to do um, anything like third or fourth grade and up, focusing on the recorder, or if you have a ukulele program, or those kinds of things, kind of um, focus more on that. Um, there's one game called Rhythm Racer. Just don't, I, we can't figure out how it works. It's a terrible game. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, uh, my apologies to those of you who still have questions. We'll need to move on. And Jaquetta, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. OK. Hi, everybody. Um, I am going to share a lesson that I did with my fourth graders. Um, and my fourth graders do Carnegie Hall's Link Up program, which might be familiar to some of you, but even if your kids don't do, aren't already doing link up. It's a lot of sort of ready-made materials that you can use if your kids are doing recorder or not even. Um, so give me a second to find it. Um, we're using Google Classroom. So I've been doing a lot with Google Slides and um, YouTube videos and um, creating things. So where is it? There it is. Ah, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is the beginning. So I try to often start with some, even if it's a thing that stands alone, I try to add a little video with some sort of greeting and some sort of interaction from me just because we don't get to see each other anymore. So that's a little intro and I'm telling them about what they're gonna see and do. And then, oops, this video, um, which was on YouTube, which I've often shown my kids in class when we have, when we're together. Um, so they can watch that. And then this is, just a photo from their link up book and the books that go with the program are also available on the Carnegie Hall website. Um, and this year it's the orchestra swings. So it's focusing on jazz and there are lots of great resources for play along things with recorder or a violin and um, listening examples. A lot of my kids don't actually even have their recorders at home. Um, so 
for this activity, I wanted to, and for most of the activities that I do, I try to give them options for playing and singing and playing whatever they might be able to find at home. So this is the track where they can listen and sing along. And then for the recorder part, I gave them lots of examples. Um, I played the recorder part slowly. There was a recorder part with the accompaniment and then a play along track so they could just play it on their own. Um, so I have found a lot of success with my kids with having things where they could listen or watch something, sort of a, almost like a read and respond thing, but in the context of music. And so kids are able to play along at different tempi and with different accompaniments. I've also done similar things with uh, my third graders on recorder and giving them options for playing along with something and including non-recorder options for the kids who maybe don't have their instruments. And that's it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jaquetta. So we are open to, to questions. Mary. Yes, thank you. Um, I was <clears throat> just wondering in the way that you shared your screen with us, do you ever do that with your students or is this just stuff that you send to them to do? Um, I've done a combination. So that particular lesson, it was just the straight up Google slide presentation and kids could work their way through it. I've also done lessons where we've been using something called Screencastify which allows you to, I see some nods. Um, for people who maybe haven't heard of it, you can take a video of your screen and do a voiceover with it. Uh, it's super handy. So I've done some, like if I have, uh, for example, notation software on my computer, I can take, share my screen of the score and talk over it and maybe I'm playing along and so they can see my fingers doing the recorder or something like that, or explaining how to use the Google slide. Um, I had another lesson for a class where they could move rhythms on a Google slide. And so I made a video of my screen so they could see me doing it so they would know what to do. Um, so I've used a combination. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Joe, I wonder if you'd like to pose your question. Hi. Um, my question was, what do you, what program are you using to record the little clips of you playing and embedding into slides? Yeah, the audio clips I do with my phone, and it's um, ooh, which one is it? Uh, Voice Record. Okay. Um, it's a, just a free iPhone app. I've also used um, iTalk. Mm -hmm as well, but um, the voice record allows you to record things and then you can change the format. So if it's not an MP3 or whatever, you can shift that in the app and because um, the Google slides will only let you put MP3s in. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. And Kate, you had a technical question that I bet isn't silly at all. I think it was actually just answered. I was curious if when they clicked on those little icons, if it took them to like a YouTube clip of it, of it playing. Um, and was curious if they were, as they were listening to it, if they're still seeing the slide or if it opens up like in a pop-up window that they have to navigate around. Yeah. It, oh, my, my internet is wonky, I think, but um, it plays within the slide. So they don't, it doesn't uh, pop up to another window or anything. They see the video right there in the slide. I think you can click on it and make the video full screen, but it doesn't send them to YouTube. Great, and we have, I think, time for one more question. Kristen, would you like to pose your question? Sure. Um, <laughs> sorry, my son would like to pose his question. Um, uh, Jaquetta, just a real quick, um, how do you uh, <laughs> set it up so that your, um, oh, I can't hear. 
your students can, sorry, so that your students can move around the notes on the screen without impacting what, like, does it create a copy of the file for them? Um, so it doesn't move around the, the template. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I missed the first part of the question. Yeah, so you were talking about how you posted something where your students can move rhythms around on the screen. How yeah. do you do that so they're, like, does it make a copy for them or, or how is that working so it's not messing with the template? Yep, um, in Google Classroom, um, you can, you can set certain parts so that the kids can't edit it, but Google Classroom allows you when you post an assignment or a material, you can click, um, I forget what all the choices are, but one of the choices is make one for every student. And so when the kids go in to do it, it will add their name to it automatically and they can manipulate the notes on the staff or whatever. In this case, it was sort of a rhythm flashcard thing. They moved these squares that had different rhythms on them. Um, and then they had the option to make a video or an audio recording of themselves playing their rhythm. Um, but yeah, Google, if your school's using Google, Google Classroom, it does that automatically for you. We are, we are for middle and upper, but not for my lower school. Um, so I guess I'd have to do a different uh, option for that. Yeah. Um, that's okay, I'll figure that out. Thank you though for the suggestions. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. And with that, I think we'll we'll turn the floor over to Evan. Hi everybody. Um, so I am going to be talking about a, a program that is linked with Google Classroom uh, called Flat. Uh, it's a Google Chrome, you can have it as a Google Chrome extension but you can also like download the program itself uh, and use it in Google. It's a music notation program uh, that links right with Classroom um, and a lot of other different, uh, like Moodle, it links with Edmodo, it, it links with Office 365. So it links with a few different uh, organizations so you can add assignments in from that notation program into whatever your school is using, I guess, if they use it. Um, right now, um, Flat is offering free 90 day trials for educators. So I think I have 76 days left on my trial. Um, and so I'm coming at this from a, an AP music theory perspective. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I've been doing with my AP music theory students. Um, but I also discovered a, a few like totally crazy features on there that I think are usable for everybody um, or for all levels uh, so that I will show you. So I'll take you through flat. So if you know flat, um, that's awesome. If you, if I misspeak or if you know something that I don't know, then as somebody asked, by all means jump in. Uh, I've only been working with this for a couple of weeks. Um, so it is a learning curve uh, for sure. Uh, but I can show you my classes. Um, and what you can do is you create assignments and you link it with your classroom. Um, and much like uh, Jaquetta was talking about before, uh, you, when you create an exercise, you, when you send it to students, you allow them to have a copy of the exercise so they can input all of their notes and stuff themselves. Uh, so I'll just take you through what an assignment looks like and why flat is so awesome. Um, flat allows you to do things like your Roman numerals, um, it uh, allows you to do, uh, let's see, um, it allows you to do some uh, Roman numerals. It allows you to do uh, guitar tabs in there if you want to. Um, and yeah, um, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to like, how I create an assignment and how you can uh, toy around with this. So I'll create a new score so you can kind of see some of the features. Um, so new score, like this, I'll add you have all these different instruments at your disposal and I can show you some uh, crazy things that they have on top of those. Um, we're not going to use the rotary organ today, we're going to use a grand piano. Um, but it's a pretty user-friendly program. I find it a lot more user-friendly even than Sibelius because there are much far fewer options. Um, so when you're creating, you just drop your note in, 
and it automatically adds measures, et cetera, et cetera. When you want to add your Roman numerals, if you're doing so for music theory, you click text, classic chord. And if this is going to be a two six chord, I just start two and it shows you all of the options, uh, which is really awesome. And if I want it to be an inversion, I do two, six, five, and boom, I've got a two, six, five chord, which is really awesome. Um, and if there's another opportunity, like uh, for me, uh, some of the assignments that I've been giving students, I've been providing the soprano line. But I've been providing the soprano line, but I, I have not been providing the bass line, and I haven't been giving strict Roman numerals. What you can do is you can add text, add an annotation on the note below. Uh, or not annotation, it's lyrics. And put six and four or six. Let me figure this out. Sit here. Sorry. Six. Four. So that way the student will know that the chord that needs to accompany whatever that note is, that the chord provided is going to be a 6-4 chord. Um, when you need to do minor exercises and you've got to change your leading tone, uh, this sounds totally crazy, but I've just like the one symbol that I've had difficult, the symbols I've had difficulty are flats and natural signs. If you're like, oh no, uh, there's no keyboard shortcut for a natural sign. I literally have just Googled natural sign copied it and pasted it and it goes right in. And there you go, you have your natural sign and now the students know that there needs to be um, a leading tone. Um, some <laughs> things uh, that I've had difficulty with, admittedly, with my students is uh, as they're writing their four part harmonies, um, you can add harmony really easily on top. I'm oh, sorry, I'm still in text. Um, you can add thirds and, sorry, I can't, it's not letting me add right now. Uh, but you can add thirds and stuff on top. Uh, but I find that when the stems are all facing the same direction, uh, it makes it difficult for students to conceptualize their four part writing. Um, and so um, uh, when you're doing your four part writing, it becomes harder. So you can, what you do is you can add uh, voice two and voice two will change. I don't know why it's not letting me add, but uh, voice two will change the stem direction. I don't know what's going on. Voice two will uh, change the stem direction. Uh, I'm, I'm just about at five minutes, but I wanna show you one more really cool thing uh, with this. You can add instruments um, for people who are uh, more Kodai related uh, and want to use this uh, with other, uh, like you can add flat to your Google Docs, you can add flat to your Google Slides, uh, so you can drop stuff in there um, from your scores. Um, what you can do is on your vocal part, if you add your vocal part, what you can do is under uh, manage instruments, you can edit and do Kodai notation, and you can do hand signs. And it will add your hand signs to the notation, which is really cool. And then it also allows you, if you are interested in layout settings, you can also do note heads, you can do uh, color, you can do boom whacker notation, and you can do shape note notation in there. Uh, so Flat is, is a really awesome program that, like I said, I think it can be used by a lot of different people. I'm sorry I didn't have an opportunity to show you how to create the assignment, assign it to students, and what those assignments look like. Uh, but that's my time. So I'm happy to take questions about it. Um, does Beautiful. It, does yeah, it, it looks. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I see a question. Does it play the notes when you drop them in or does it also, it does have a full playback feature. So if you wanna play it at the top, I, uh, I can share the screen again. Um, at the top of it, it has, let me get out of this. At the top, it's got the playback feature right here.
And so you can have the playback feature. Fantastic. Other questions? Does it have ready-made scores? Uh, I haven't looked into ready-made scores personally, but let, I can tell you, um, let's see. You, you basically have a library um, and I think you can import scores from Sibelius uh, and uh, Finale if you have them on Sibelius and Finale uh, or if you have them other digital programs. Uh, it allows certain file types to be uh, uploaded. Wow. Well, that sounds kind of awesome, um, even for this total <laughs> non-musician in the crowd. So thank you so much, Evan. And with that, let's turn to our final presenter and we'll turn things over to you, Rich. Hey, can everyone hear me? <laughs> yep. Sorry. Um, so I'm gonna share um, something that I've, I've been working on my, uh, we're, we're working with my sixth and seventh graders. Uh, so using a website called soundation.com. It's like an online version of GarageBand, which I found incredibly useful over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm still figuring all this out, just like everyone else, but I'm, I'm really keen to show what's been going on so far. I thought it'd be useful if I gave some background first, just to contextualize things. So I teach in middle and upper school um, and at various levels. Uh, I teach all grades, sort of five through 12, and we cover instrumental skills and music theory and composition. Um, so it's a, it's a wide range. And I found that I've been able to use Foundation somehow um, for a lot of these subjects. There's a lot of um, key ideas that Foundation is able to um, hone in on. Um, what's been unique about my experience is that um, really the primary goal of what I've been doing over the last two weeks now uh, has been to create and maintain community um, rather than deliver any sort of curriculum. Um, we found that our students are craving community. The feedback we've received from our boys and in conversation with our boys is that they're devastated that they can't return to school, um, chiefly for social reasons, not because they want to do that English assignment. Um, they miss the community. Um, and, you know, the admin and the student council are, are in constant conversation about trying to create um, more opportunities for our boys to exist in community. So I try and filter um, all of my online curricula through this lens and have all of my projects work to that end to try and have opportunities for the boys to find um, connection. Um, the second thing I'll say is that um, the schedule that I'm currently working on is we meet once a week with um, each music class. Well, I meet once a week with each music class um, for 90 minutes. And I've divided that 90 minutes into um, a 45 minute online connection space, similar to this Zoom chat, um, where we meet as a whole class and then 45 minutes for them to go away and do independent work. Um, and then they have a whole other day and homework time as well where they can work on um, whatever they wanna work on. Um, so for my middle school subjects, I decided to teach like three week units, just an arbitrary choice really. Um, so the first connection space of so that three weeks I would use to front load with like a mini lesson um, on whatever topic we're covering. And then each subsequent connection space would be an opportunity for the students to um, share work that they've done. Um, they can share their screens, they can share their compositions um, and as a group they can workshop ideas. So that's how we find that sort of connection um, between all of them. Um, so in grades six and seven, and I'll share my screen in a minute to show you the program. Um, in grade six and seven, uh, we're focusing on composition, uh, specifically building an understanding of musical forms, um, both structures of melodies and of whole pieces. And they use foundation to compose their piece. And it's an, again, it's an online program like GarageBand, which works with Google Chrome and saves work in the cloud. So really, if you have a computer or a device full stop that has access to Chrome, uh, you can use it. And that's foundation, so it's S-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N.com. Um, and it's, it's really intuitive and there's a couple of YouTube videos on there that have um, tutorials. Um, if they've used anything similar, I mean, it's, it's, far, like it's far simpler than Logic or anything like that, but I suppose the thing that would be most similar to is GarageBand. Um, so during the independent work time, I give them sort of time to complete weekly tasks, which I post on our Google Classroom, and that gives them time to build understanding and refine their piece. Um, so in the first connection space, we spoke about musical form. 
and in grade seven, they're discussing rondo form. So he had like a mini lesson on rondo form. And then the subsequent connection spaces, I've had time to answer any questions and then given time uh, for chats to share their work and give each other feedback. I also, um, another way to sort of replicate uh, the in-class experience of being able to ask a question and then have a live answer given, I post every single week, I post a new thread that essentially says, do you have any questions about the work this week? Post your questions here and I'll answer them. Um, and that way, someone can ask a question and then everyone can see that answer. So it's the same concept as raising a hand in class. Um, so the project will wrap up next week and they'll all have completed pieces uh, by them, which is really cool. So I'll share my screen now and show you the actual, um, oh, sorry, show you the actual website. Um, share screen. There we are. Um, so this is it here. Um, so you just you can log in um, and sign up. You just sign up for a free version. All my chaps use the free version. There are premium versions that you can buy, but I um, don't allow them to sign up uh, for the premium ones using their school login. Um, so you just sign in using a school login uh, with on Google, and then you can go to the. There's a whole community here. People can post whatever the tracks they like here, and our students do post tracks here. There is a learning section. I haven't really used that function, um, but I'd be keen to explore it. We usually jump in the studio and you'll see when it comes up that it looks exactly like any other sort of garage band logic studio. Um, and you can start from a template. The kids love starting from a template and then um, playing around with that. Um, they create some really cool sounding like EDM and hip hop uh, tracks, but I usually ask them not to do that. And they go, um, I'll get rid of these so I can show you how they create them. It's pretty cool. I'm close to my five minutes, so I'll um, be as quick as I can. Um, you can add channels by going down here, adding audio channels. You can add instrumental channels. I love doing this. This really helps them with their melody writing. So if you double click in the space, you can create your own MIDI channel. And so each, you can see each box is divided into uh, 16th notes. So each box is a 16th note, that's one whole measure. So they can really conceptualize the keyboard and craft um, melodies and really sort of intelligently think about the rhythms instead of just going to the sound library here and just dragging loops in. They can do that and that has value and um, they do do that really expertly, but I love manipulating this. You can also create drum beats and all sorts of other fun functions. It's a wonderful website. Um, it's worth just having a play around on it, um, honestly. Um, and I've learned so much from the students because they've been able to play it around at like two, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning and come in the next day and said, I found out this, you can use super sore for this thing. And it's been a really cool experience getting to um, share it with them. Um, so I think that's my time. I'll, st I'll stop there. I'm happy to answer any questions if you'll have them. I'm oh, sorry, my chat, that'd be handy. Can they download, work and share it? Yeah, they can. So it's tricky to share and download what they're currently working on in the studio. But what you can do is you can um, publish your track. So once you have a finished piece, you can publish your track and then share it um, with whomever you like. It's just a link that exists online. Um, what we do during class is I ask them to share their screen and then they can see what people have been working on inside their studio. Um, and quite often, like I've used this during class, physical class time, and they've just gone around and shown each other their computer screens. Um, but sharing the share screen function in Google Meets has been really useful for that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read as quick as I can. Um, can you write functions into the program? I'm not sure, actually. That's a really great question. I'm not sure um, exactly um, if that capability. Um, but as I said, the, the kids are light years ahead of me on this programming. So I'm sure if you ask one of my students, they'd be able to tell you. Um, Soundtrack. Yeah, so the kids have used Soundtrap before. Um, they love that as well. Another another online tool they really love using is um, Incredibox. It does something slightly different, but it's just the idea, especially I found for my 13 and 12 year old boys is that they're obsessed with their um, 
screen time. And, you know, that's problematic in its own way. But um, in this moment, it's been a really useful tool to be able to harness. So they become really passionate, not just about, you know, the technology, but also um, making music, which has been really useful. Can Good. the kids collaborate at one piece? Um, yeah, that I, have, I have had kids do that. It's tricky to share one piece. It's, it is possible. Um, what they typically just do is jump in the same sort of uh, connection space and, and work on it together. Or in the physical classroom, they just use a headphone that are, and, and do it that way. There is a way to do it. Um, I remember finding out and thinking this is too complicated for me to have to explain. So I just ignored it, frankly. Excellent. Well, with that, I, I first want to thank all four of our presenters. That was terrific.